Kafka. Lead singer Michael Stipe and guitarist Peter Buck attribute that to a deliberate attempt to stay out of the mainstream. Well, it's not uh, as, as um, direct and forward as the things you hear on the radio. We therefore don't get quite as much airplay as, say, you know, Springsteen or Prince or whatever. Um, I think it's something that you have to think about a little bit more than most rock and roll bands, and, and you have to be willing to uh, listen in a new way. You don't, you can't hear the words and be able to guess what the next line is, and you, you can't guess the chord changes really. Not that we're that original, but we're not the type of uh, kind of mass-produced stuff that you hear. It's not like flavor of the week. I would like to think that in 10 years' time, I can listen to our records and feel like I really did something. You know? Do you think the audience for R.E.M. can get wider because there seems to be an increased push by IRS, the record company, to do that? I'd like to think that there's really no limit to our audience, but I think that uh, it's kind of a matter of people accepting us as we are because we're not really willing to change to fit the radio format or whatever. So, but I think that, you know, the way the times are in music right now, things are kind of shifting that way anyway. The fact that you can hear, or the fact that a band like Husker Du can get signed to a major label or... That, that you can't hear R.E.M. On, on the radio at all is kind of indicative of that. R.E.M. before was always considered to be great alternative music, but it almost seems that you guys have become part of the mainstream now. Well, you know, mainstream's changed to accept us. Um, we're really just four guys from Georgia who just write songs and record them and play them, you know. Um, we've persevered, and after four years of doing it, you know, we are on some of the major stations, and we're, you know, selling a fair amount of records, and, and reaching a fair amount of people. Do you still consider yourself to be underground? I do. Very much. It's funny, because all of our friends are in bands that probably are. I mean, literally, they starve, you know, and they play these clubs that are sometimes underground, and, you know, uh, drive around in vans, and so sometimes I feel a little removed from that, but then all I have to do is, is see some of the mega productions that the big bands put on, you know, how many records that these major bands sell, and what they do, and what they say, and how they act, and I feel, you know, we're definitely out of the mainstream, we're definitely, uh, our alliances are, are definitely not with the bands that you see on I think that it's healthy for us to feel that we have an adversary relationship with the media and with, not the media as, as people or writers, but, you know, the, the radio stations and video things. And we're on the outside looking in. We have to work in our own way as opposed to uh, working in the way that's accepted in, in the business. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, if we sell a million records, I'll still feel kind of on the outside.